Greetings and welcome to the Open Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland and I'm your host. On today's podcast, we'll be discussing mystical orbs and how they are manifested. On a recent C5 Skywatch night or evening, located on a farm to the north of Brisbane, where I live, an area I like to affectionately refer to as serial killer country, I saw my first orb. It was roughly the size of a soccer ball, round of course, and the most amazing pulsating bright orange colour. It took me by surprise as I had not expected to see such an energy entity until my consciousness had developed more. But there it was, hovering a few meters away, confirming yet another mystical and unknown part of our unseen world. By the way, for all those skeptics out there, I can confirm that I saw the orb with my own eyes and not via a camera or any equipment whatsoever. So, no going on about specks of dust on the lens, etc, please. So tired of this argument. Especially now that I'm post-orb sighting. Anyway, it prompted me to do some research on this phenomenon and ask the following two basic questions of a well-informed paranormal associate. One, what exactly are orbs? Her answer, Orbs are energies that nature produces to collect healing energy. Nature also uses orbs as a source of food. And my second question was, how are orbs made or manifested? And she answered, orbs are made in several different ways. The first is the cells within our bodies produce orbs and these orbs allow ourselves to heal our physical body or aura. Channelers produce orbs to allow the flow of psychic information. Mediums produce orbs to communicate with the spirit world. Most orbs are discarded dead chakras from human and animal bodies. The second answer to the question of how are orbs made was that the sun and the moon produce orbs constantly to either collect energy from the earth or to energize our planet. The third answer, souls use orbs to travel to earth, searching for their birth mother. Women wanting to become mothers produce orbs, searching for future children. People who die produce orbs to carry their spirits to the next realm. Souls that are waiting for conception or who have recently died use orbs to explore and play in the earth plane. The fourth answer, When a person misses someone that has died, they sometimes create an orb. When they are asleep, and it has to be a deep sleep, and leave to spend some time with their loved one in another realm. Often this is reflected in a dream. The fifth answer. When a person is overloaded by stress, they can produce an orb to escape their physical life for a while. Again, in a deep sleep state. Um, something similar to being in the astral. The sixth answer. Some orbs, however, are living life forms, um, what we might know as elementals, and they belong to the elemental kingdom. The seventh answer. Orbs can also be a beautiful fusion of chemicals that float around in the air, water or land. The eighth answer, some orbs are multidimensional and are a form of telecommunication between realms. People who claim to receive information from angels and ascended masters or spirit beings will most likely receive information via an orb. Usually the orb is produced and sent by one being to another. The final answer, number nine, is the orb will attach to a temporary chakra set up in the aura, usually the spirit field. 
and the information will be transmitted on its receipt. So, I hope my friend's answers cleared up any misconceptions anyone out there has of orbs. Now before I wrap up, this will be a very short podcast today, I'd just like to read the introduction to an article that was written by another columnist, Kay Homebush, on what we call her the Orb Whisperer. So I thought you might enjoy a little bit of her article called Mysterious Orbs of Light. My fascination with orbs began by accident when I noticed strange round balls of white light visible within my photographs. At first I didn't think much about the objects until I showed a friend of mine and he told me that they had also noticed these strange round objects in one of their own shots, which they had taken a year or so earlier during a winter solstice event. I was intrigued and started to look back through some of my early photographs to see if there were any more objects to be found. And lo and behold, there were. I just hadn't noticed them at the time due to my lack of knowledge about the phenomenon. Most of the round balls of white light in my shots were captured at night with a basic camera, the flash set to on. I did however find a couple of photographs taken in broad daylight without a flash that contained orbs as well. This was fascinating. Now I was really hooked and began to take photographs of anything and everybody, mainly with a flash to see if I could get more of these fascinating objects to appear. This was around the time that I found out that people were calling them orbs. I started to experiment to see why these beautiful orbs were showing up on some of my photographs but not on others and here's my results. One, I discovered that only select people were able to capture orbs on film. Not everybody has this ability as I had assumed. And two, I experimented with a couple of different camera types and brands to see if the orbs would still show up and yes, they did. And three, I asked a friend to photograph the same location that I had just shot to see if she was also able to capture this phenomenon on film. She did as I asked, but failed to capture any orbs on film. My own picture teeming with the phenomenon. I will be posting the entire article, if you can, if you'd like to continue reading it, on our website and on our blog page at www.tomspod.com. Now, Kay and I uh, went on a spiritual road trip together a couple of years back, and we repeated this experiment at various locations around. Um, Queensland and New South Wales in Australia and something quite odd happened. I, um, as Kay is able to capture orbs beautifully on, on camera, I capture vectors which are kind of like um, wind tunnels, um, kind of elongated um, sheet, like wormholes in a way uh, and Throughout our trip, whenever she took a photo which captured orbs, I would actually capture my vectors at the same time, even though we were pointing our cameras at the same place. So, have a think on that. <laughs> anyway, enjoy your day. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe, and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com.